This episode is hidden and is not explained by Egyptologists. They don't speak at all about floods of the Nile. An innocent mind immediately wonders, but what did they do for three or four months if they couldn't cultivate the fields? The Egyptians did three things during these three to four months of vacation. Observe, measure, and note everything. As soon as the Nile returned to its bed, a big problem had arisen. Field limits had disappeared. It was then necessary to retrace the limits of the fields of each peasant and start sowing as soon as possible. And they had to be traced correctly to avoid disputes. Therefore, the Egyptians began to draw straight lines, rectangles, squares, diagonals, circles, and triangles with strings and sticks. Everything was noted on papyrus. It was the beginning of geometry. They understood a fundamental function of nature. Everything is divided or assembled in small equal units. This observation will serve them throughout their discoveries. They also needed a unit of measure to properly demarcate the plots. Geometry is good, but after all, you must measure the lines. They considered the king's foot. The length of the king's foot could be used as a standard. This standard would be multiplied and distributed throughout the kingdom. They considered the feet, arms, legs, and elbows of the king. But there was a problem. This unit was not fixed. There would be no problem during his reign, but all the kings were not the same size. The next king would surely want to use his foot or his elbow out of pride. In the hills, waiting for the retreat of the Nile, the Egyptians thought and looked for a solution to the problem. This unit of measurement would have to have a fixed length in time, if possible, never change. They observed the size of different plants, fruits, seeds, any object in nature. But all these objects did not have a constant size. For example, if we water a seed well, the following year its size will have changed. And over long distances, small differences quickly became significant. Then, they had the idea to measure water. Yes, fresh water from the Nile. They measured one drop and then another. They were all the same size. From the lower Nile to the upper Nile, the drops were the same size they noticed that the size of the water drop did not change year after year. It's wonderful. The Egyptians found a unique unit. The diameter of the drop of water on a waterproof surface, like granite or alabaster, is constant. It measures one centimeter. Today, an incredible video in which you will dive into the heart of the first stage of the Serapium project. Oola, 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 oola. So this is the stop M on the diagram. I don't know if the Egyptians knew the meter or not. I don't know at all. You even checked the measurement? You measured it two times? I double every measure every time. Okay, so one meter. 1.000 meters. Precisely one meter measured by laser twice in a row. They named this small unit the Royal Finger. Ten drops of water, or ten royal fingers, equals one royal hand. One hundred drops of water, so one hundred royal fingers, or ten royal hands, equals one royal leg. Centuries later, these discoveries were taken out of secret coffers and renamed. The royal finger was called the centimeter. The royal hand, the decimeter. And the royal leg, the meter. They were presented as recent discoveries, and the French appropriated them made in France. The diameter of the drop of fresh water measures what is now called one centimeter. Water is a universal constant. The size of the drop of fresh water will never change for thousands and millions of years. Yes, the universal unit, the meter, was not invented in 1780 but it was discovered by the Egyptians millennia ago.